Okay, this is the final video of the playlist. Then um, part one of the anthology will be complete. So I'll be reading through a game of polo with a headless goat. This is in preparation for your Edexcel IGCSE English language exam, paper one. So you'll notice with the title there seems to be a contrast, a game of polo with a headless goat. Um, polo as a sport is normally um, closely associated with wealth and sophistication, whereas a headless goat just seems to connote you know, something that's uncultured, violent as well. Um, so they just seem to come from completely different worlds. Um, so the, I guess the big question here is with Emma being a Westerner, in Pakistan, um, how does she view what she sees? Is she just uh, simply relaying what she sees, or is this through really a Western lens, and therefore is it biased, is it judgmental? So there's not really an answer to that, um, but you should at least raise that in your answer, um, whatever the question may be, and show your appreciation for, we're not quite sure what her perspective is, whether she's being judgmental, or if she's just literally saying, um, what she sees from a Western perspective. It's a travelogue, so it's her personal experience, and it's important that we understand that this is from a Western lens. She's from the Western world, um, so Pakistan will be very different for her, um, so this is from a, an outsider's point of view. We drove off to find the best viewing spot, which turned out to be the crest of the hill, so we could see the approaching race. I asked the lads if we could join in the wacky races and follow the donkeys, and they loved the idea. We'll open the car boot, you climb inside and point your camera towards the race. As the donkeys overtake us, we'll join the cars. But will you try and get to the front? Oh yes, that's no problem. So what we notice already is she's waiting on this donkey race, and she refers to the donkey race as the wacky races. If you're not sure, maybe do a quick Google it's a Western cartoon. I, if I, I remember I used to watch it. I think it's American, although I can't really remember. Um, but it is what, basically what it says, a wacky races. All the drivers have weird and wonderful um, cars to, to drive in and so on. So it's a point of comparison for her because she's a Westerner and that's the way she's decided to refer to the, to the donkey races. So what does she mean there? Does she mean, I guess she means it's peculiar to her from her perspective. Um, but again, ask yourself, is she judging the race? This is a race we'll later learn because the locals get very upset over the decision that actually this race is very important for them. Whereas she's flippantly referring to it as the wacky races. So is it quite unfair that she um, describes it in that way? So that's up for question. Um, also think about what she's planning to do. She's going to sit in the car boot to film the race. So that's quite obviously unorthodox. You wouldn't typically see that in the Western world. I'm sure you'd be stopped by a police car very quickly and issued a ticket at least. Um, and it seems really dangerous. So already we have um, a hint here that maybe in this world um, there isn't such tough laws in this aspect at least. So is there a sense already of lawlessness in this area? The two lads who had never been interested in this Karachi sport were suddenly fired up with enthusiasm. We waited for eternity on the brow of the hill, me perched in the boot with a zoom lens pointing out. Nearly one hour later I was beginning to feel rather silly when the only action was a villager on a wobbly bicycle who nearly fell off as he cycled past and gazed around at us. So it's quite hyperbolic, we waited for eternity, but that's just to really uh, create that suspense, that anticipation as they await for things to begin. Uh, and it's they wait almost an hour for anything to happen. In the meantime, all they see is a villager kind of going by on a wobbly bicycle. So that's quite comedic as well. Uh, but notice the contrast in technology. She has her zoom lens camera, whereas a local is on a wobbly bicycle. So that kind of reflects the contrast in their worlds. And we know that she's coming from a completely different world and a completely different perspective to how the locals will feel about this race. Several vehicles went past and some donkey carts carrying spectators. Are they coming? We called out to them. Coming, coming, came the reply. I was beginning to lose faith in its happening, but the lads remained confident. 
Um, so again, the use the question, are they coming, is obviously because she's waiting. She can't wait for this to happen. And so that adds to the suspense. But so does the ambiguity of their answer just coming, coming. Not They don't give any specifics as to when it will start. And that also obviously shows that there's a lack of organisation with this race in particular. Just as I was assuming that the race had been cancelled, we spotted two approaching donkey carts in front of a cloud of fumes and dust created by some 50 vehicles roaring up in their wake. As they drew nearer, Yakub revved up the engine and began to inch the car out of the lay-by. The two donkeys were almost dwarfed by their entourage, but there was no denying their speed. The Kibler donkey is said to achieve speeds of up to 40 kilometres per hour, and this looked close. The two were neck and neck, their jockeys perched on top of their tiny carts using their whips energetically, although not cruelly. Um, so a few things here. I find this quite cartoonish, this cloud of fumes and dust as the kind of the donkey carts emerge from it. Um, so that helps build drama. It's part of the rising action. And so is the um, onomatopoeia of the roaring vehicles and the revved up engine. So everything's kind of building. Um, something to ask yourself is when she um, refers to the speed of the donkey, um, or the donkeys I should say, um, is it really a comical comparison? She later kind of refers to this like F1 without rules. And if we compare it to the F1, obviously this speed um, is, is really quite underwhelming. Um, so is she actually being quite patronising here? Or is she genuinely impressed that donkeys can actually um, race at this speed? Um, again, something for you to question. Um, because the race is so close, with it being neck and neck, um, we, that builds that suspense as well. So at this point, this is a really suspenseful moment. The noise of the approaching vehicles grew, horns tooting, bells ringing and the special rattles used just for the pur this purpose, like maracas, a metal container filled with dried beans. Men standing on top of their cars and vans, hanging out of taxis and perched on lorries, all cheered and shouted, while the vehicles jostled to get to the front of the convoy. So we've got those onomatopoeic sounds reflecting the excitement and the chaos of, of this event. And also look at the active verbs, again, just highlighting the excitement, the chaos, the involvement of everyone there. Um, Yacoub chose exactly the right moment to edge out of the road and swerve in front of the nearest car, finding the perfect place to see the two donkeys and at the front of the vehicles. This was Formula One without rules, or a city centre rush hour gone an anarchic. A complete flouting of every type of traffic rule and common sense. So again here we're starting to see that comparison to the Western world. Is this therefore a judgmental tone? Should she even be comparing it to, the, to Formula One? Um, or a city centre rush hour anywhere else. This is how it is here. Our young driver relished this unusual test of driving skills. It was survival of the fittest and depended upon the ability to cut in front of a vehicle with a sharp flick of the steering wheel, no lane discipline here. Quick reflexes to spot a gap in the traffic for a couple of seconds. Nerves of steel and an effective horn. There were two races, the motorised spectators at the back in front, the two donkeys still running close and amazingly not put off by the uproar just behind them. Ahead of the donkeys, oncoming traffic, for it was a main road, had to dive into the ditch and wait there until we had passed. Yakub loved it. We stayed near to the front, his hand permanently on the horn and his language growing more colourful with every vehicle that tried to cut in front. So a number of things here. Um... The phrase survival of the fittest creates that sense of lawlessness. I feel like you kind of you refer to nature or the animal world in that way. So it's, it's interesting that she uses that term. Um, so there seems to be something quite uncivilised, or at least that's how she sees it. Um, the listing of, um, of what Yakub does, the skills that he shows helps build tension. Um, notice kind of the long complex sentences giving you really kind of a list of all the, the process that he has to follow so he's clearly very skilled at driving. Um, the chaos is doubled because there are actually two races as well 
we've got the donkey race and the motorized spectators so that almost makes it even more exciting and also of course even more chaotic look at the par sorry parent oh gosh i can't say it parenthetical parenthetical apologies statement um so we've realized that this is taking place at the main road think about the structure here as well that she releases this information here when we've just learned about the whole chaos it's really shocking to hear that this is happening on the main road try and think now about the main road for you i'm in chicago so i think about michigan avenue uh, avenue um so to think of a donkey race of this kind um unofficially being uh taking place there just seems absurd to me um also again i think the use of cartoonish imagery where they're like the oncoming traffic has to dive into the ditch as well and the alliteration there um, emphasises kind of the drama of it as well oh, also the per sorry the parentheses here as well shows um, her western perspective again no lane discipline here okay the road straightened and levelled and everyone picked up speed as we neared the end of the race. But just as they were reaching the finishing line, the hospital gate, there was a near pile-up as the leading donkey swerved, lost his, lost his footing and he and the cart tumbled over. The race was over. So look at that paradox. The finishing line is the hospital gate. Somewhere in the Western world, and I'm sure elsewhere, that is closely associated to safety and order. Yet this chaotic scene um, is here instead. So she's just from a completely different world to what she's seeing and experiencing right now. Um, notice that the, the two sentences in this uh, paragraph, the first two sentences, are longer complex sentences. And that juxtaposes them with that very short sentence, which highlights the suddenness of the race coming to an end but you might argue as well it seems quite anticlimactic there's been this huge build-up and then it's like oh it was over and actually it wasn't it wasn't quite the result or the way that people thought it would finish and then the trouble began i assume the winner was the one who completed the race but it was not seen that way by everyone apart from the two jockeys and officials who it turned out were actually monitoring the race there were over a hundred punters who had all staked money on the race and therefore had strong opinions. Some were claiming that the donkey had fallen because the other one had been ridden too close to him. Voices were raised, fists were out and tempers rising. Everyone gathered around one jockey and official while the bookmakers were trying to insist that the race should be rerun. Re so look at the sense of irony here. And then the trouble began. Do you not think there's been enough trouble already? They are racing on a main road. The finish line is the hospital gate. It's not a closed road because there's oncoming traffic that's had to uh, dive into the ditch. Uh, we've got a second race behind them of the spectators. Is that not enough trouble? Absolutely not. The trouble hasn't even started apparently. That helps kind of create that tension again. What else, what could what could go wrong? How could this be any worse? Um, notice that what she assumes is very different to what the locals think. So that again highlights her Western perspective and how she see th sees things differently. She's the outsider. Um, note the inverted commas when referring to the officials as officials. This is a sarcastic tone and actually it discredits them. She's saying basically from her opinion, from her perspective, they aren't officials. They're not doing the job she would expect an official to do in her world. Um, look at the rule of three as well. This just helps build tension and um, helps communicate that actually maybe this is getting a bit too dangerous. Yakub and Iqbal were nervous of hanging around a volatile situation. They agreed to find out for me what was happening, ordering me to stay inside the car as they were swallowed up by the crowd. They emerged some time later. It's still not resolved, said Iqbal, but it's starting to get nasty. I think we should leave. As we drove away, Yakub reflected on his driving skills. I really enjoyed that, he said, as we drove off at a more sedate pace. But I don't even have my licence yet, because I'm underage. So... Um, the fact that Yakub and Iqbal feel nervous should encourage us to feel nervous because they were really excited by the donkey race. Um, they were even more excited when they had to be part of the spectator race. 
And so if they are nervous now, and we know it does, it takes a lot to make them nervous, then we realise that this situation is actually very, very serious. So that encourages us to kind of, um, to feel quite scared about what might happen next. Um, it, that's helped with the personification of the crowd swallowing them up. So it suggests that the crowd is a threatening environment. Um, and then finally, what an interesting way to reveal this with the structure, leaving this almost like a conclusion and only finding out now that Yacoub doesn't have a license. So now, in hindsight, the race becomes even more dangerous. So it's a quite an interesting structure in the sense that it was already suspenseful, it was already dangerous, but now looking back in hindsight, it was even more so. There's something... Now that we know that at this end of the extract, it becomes more comedic because we know they're okay. Had we known that at the beginning, maybe we'd be even more nervous. They both found this hilarious, but I was glad he hadn't told me before. An inexperienced underage driver causing a massive pile-up in the middle of the high-stakes donkey race could have caused problems. So we've got contrast in perspective here um, with them finding it hilarious. But she's obviously not so, uh, doesn't find it um, so entertaining. So again, we're seeing here a clash in culture and how she potentially has um, a bit more appreciation for rules and laws and abiding by them, um, at least in this instance. Okay, so um, we don't know what's going to come up for question four. I do like to always kind of generalise with thoughts and feelings because I feel like that can be applied to different questions. Um, if it is thoughts and feelings, maybe talk about it in the order that you think her thoughts and feelings changed. At the beginning, she's anticipating the race. So there's an element, even though there's a building of suspense, it's more so from excitement than it is from fear. Uh, so we've got this anticipation. Then we have the actual excitement of the moment. So we've got those longer complex sentences as part of the rising action, the onomatopoeic sounds as well, as we know that the people around her are also very excited. And then you could argue, if I can find it, there's a bit of an anticlimax when it ends. Um, and then it kind of ends with fear, um, with those tempers rising amongst the locals. So maybe, um, yeah, talk about her thoughts and feelings and how it how they progress and change over the course of this extract.